In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our lesson for today is taken from the Epistle lesson from Ephesians chapter 2. One of the busiest intersections in town is the corner of Veterans Parkway and College Avenue. You can kind of picture where I'm pointing you to there. On one corner there's a Petco and some other businesses, another there's a strip mall with an AT&T, on another there's a foot clinic I think and a radio station there, but then there's one corner where there is nothing. It's been laid bare. There's nothing there. What once stood there was an old Howard Johnson Hotel, right? But just this last year, that hotel was torn down. It was demolished and left in a heap of rubble. Then the rubble was removed, and now there's only dirt and rock and some grass and weeds. It's all that's left. So what will they build there next? You would think they, in such a prime location, they would have already have built something, but they haven't yet, but I'm sure they're planning to, right? A ritzy hotel, a retail store, maybe a church. Well, probably not a church. They probably couldn't afford the land, right? Well, everyone knows that we need another restaurant here in Bloomington Normal, right? It's exactly what we need. We just don't have enough. So that's, from what I've heard, what they're planning to build there. So in the coming months, ground will be broken and a foundation will be laid, a cornerstone laid, and, and in a matter of months, will go up a new Red Robin restaurant. Yep, I'm sure the competitors are also happy nearby. So there'll be a new restaurant for everyone to flock to and enjoy, just like Jason's Deli, right? Well, today as we meditate on our epistle lesson, we meditate and use this, this story, this illustration, to also apply to our life of faith and how there is also demolishing and tearing down that takes place in our lives and also building up and building a brand new building in us, the new foundation. So we'll illustrate that today. And there is one who is the demolition man and also the master builder, and namely Jesus Christ himself. First, he's the demolition man who has to tear down and demolish the walls that divide all of us, right? Divide all of us as people in this sinful and fallen world. Before he can build us back up, build a new building with a new foundation, he must first tear down. Yes, he is the one who tears down the walls of hostility, the walls of separation and division between all people throughout the world, and more specifically in our epistle lesson between the Jews and the Gentiles. Between family members also in this life today, between church members as well, between co-workers, and the list goes on. And he unites all of us then together as one in him. He abolishes with the Jews the old covenant that was there for so long, with all of its regulations, with all of its animal sacrifices, ceremonial and civil ordinances, and he unites Jew and Gentile together in one faith. That master plan of, of tearing down, of, of demolishing that old covenant, it took a long time. It took thousands of years. From the time of the fall of man with Adam and Eve, to the time of the coming of the promised Messiah in the flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Before God could fulfill the promise of building up that new building, of breaking new ground, laying the cornerstone and the foundation as the master builder, a more perfect covenant would have to come. God's Son had to bring all of humanity that was walled off from God. All who were far away, who were distant from Him, separated from Him, all Gentiles, He had to bring them near to God. And God's solution for that, God's plan to demolish the wall, to destroy it, to get rid of it, was built upon Jesus Christ and His Word. The New Testament in my blood as Jesus says in the Lord's Supper. Yes, all of those who were far off, who were distant, would be brought near, would be brought close by the perfect, holy, and precious blood of Jesus. Secondly, and most importantly, Christ demolished the wall of sin, the wall of sin that separated all of us from God. It was a big wall. Yes, a huge wall, so big, so tall, so wide, so difficult to take down. But there was only one person who could take it down. Yes, God the Father sent His Son Jesus to demolish this wall. When you, my friends, deserved to be demolished, to be destroyed because of your fallen sinfulness, Christ was instead. He took your place. He took the wrecking ball to his body. He was beaten and battered until he lie there dead like a heap of rubble on the cross. As your substitute, Christ demolished the sin that made you dead in your sins and trespasses. Yes, He buried your sin with Him through His death. Yes, and through your baptism, your sin was put to death. It was demolished once and for all. No longer able to, to burden your conscience and separate you from God. And if Christ is our demolition man he is also then our master builder right he is the one who builds us up he is the one who builds up his church he's the only one who can so what once was just bare ground what once was laid desolate is given new life as Christ builds up his people his church the church that's grounded on the perfect cornerstone and foundation. Christ and His Word. His perfect body that was demolished on the cross for, for us and was put in the tomb, it didn't stay a heap of rubble for long, right? No, His body was raised up three days later from the dead. A new body was built up, a new foundation laid, having shed His perfect and holy blood for the sins of the world. A new covenant was established. We, my friends, we were once nothing. We were once like a heap of rubble ourselves. We were worthless. We were lifeless. We had no foundation. Nothing good about us at all. But Christ, as the master builder, made something good out of us. He took that heap of worthless rubble, and Christ built us up from that old rubble. He took that old rubble, and he made a new building, a new building in him. As St. Paul writes in our epistle lesson in verse 21 for today, he says, the whole structure being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. You are that holy temple. Yes, all believers in Christ, including you and me, 
are his holy temple, righteous and pleasing in God's sight. And that continues then to be built up in him. That continues to be raised up in him as the church grows. Yes, a new dwelling place in which his Holy Spirit works and gives life. On November 20th, 1949, Christ Lutheran Church held a ceremony on Fell Avenue. This ceremony was held to lay the first cornerstone for this congregation. Although worship services had begun two years earlier in the normal theater, the congregation was laying a cornerstone to build up their first church building. On that day in 1949, I actually got a copy of the newspaper article clipping which is titled, Christ, Cornerstone of Church. Christ, and it's uh, quoted by Pastor Albers, Reverend George C. Albers of Decatur. And he said these important words. He said, a building would stand just as long if a cornerstone laying ceremony were not held. But we are here not just to lay a stone, but to erect a temple of God. And that temple is symbolized by this stone, which is Christ himself. End quote. And so on that day, the cornerstone for the parish hall was laid for Christ Evangelical Lutheran Church in Normal, Illinois. A little bit later, on July 30th, 1961, a second cornerstone was laid for the sanctuary, the chapel, and the classroom. And then on October 28th, many years later, as relocated, moving here to Hershey Road, on October 28th, 2001, a third cornerstone was laid outside of the entrance here to the church. Three different cornerstones laid for the blessing. The most important thing to remember with all of this, as President Pastor Albers reminded us, is that these cornerstones aren't any different than any other cornerstone on any other building that is built. It's just a stone, right? What's most important, what is central, is the Word of God, Christ Himself. Yes, that His Word is taught faithfully, and the gifts of the sacraments are delivered faithfully. Each and every time the living stones, that is, you and me, all people who are in Christ Jesus, the body of Christ, living stones, the temple of God gathers around those gifts. Yes, my friends, you are the church. You are the body of Christ. Another thing to remember is that as each of these cornerstones were laid since the founding of Christ Lutheran Church, they all hold important contents within them. It's often very common for people, especially with maybe building churches, to put important documents, important things within that cornerstone, right, for years, and they encapsulate them to keep them so that they don't get destroyed. So here in our cornerstone here on Hershey are 41 different items according to the list I received. Forty-one different items, but I'll just list a couple of them. The most important are, of course, God's Word, the Bible, the Book of Concord, a couple of hymnals, and a catechism. The same resources we still use today to teach the faith, to proclaim Jesus Christ and Him crucified for the forgiveness of all of our sins. And as we continue to gather here for the divine service at Christ Lutheran Church each and every week, having celebrated earlier this month 67 years of God's grace, forgiveness, and mercy in Jesus Christ our Savior, let us rejoice. 
Let us rejoice and be glad in it that God has been so gracious and merciful to us to allow us to meet and to receive His gifts each and, each and every time we gather, focusing on Him as our chief cornerstone and His Word as the foundation of our faith and life together as one in Him. Yes, buildings, they will come and go. Buildings will be torn down, demolished, and new ones built. Just like in Pilger, Nebraska recently, if you saw pictures of that, an LCMS church was completely destroyed and the parsonage as well. But then the beautiful pictures of them meeting the next week outside where that, that uh, sanctuary used to be, they're meeting there together still around the means of grace. May not be as pretty and beautiful, but there is what is most beautiful the word and the sacraments being received. Yes, Christ and his word remain forever. Nothing can change that. He is the master builder and with him as our cornerstone and his word as our foundation and we as the little stones that are built up in him, his church will never fall away. As the Apostle Paul wrote, and I'll conclude with this, in his letter to the church in Corinth, 1 Corinthians 3.10, Paul writes, According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, Paul says, I laid a foundation, of course, by the grace of God, as an apostle sent by Jesus Christ himself to preach and proclaim his word. I laid a foundation on Jesus Christ, and then he goes on to say, and someone else is building upon it. Isn't that wonderful that for all generations, that foundation continues to be built upon as more and more missionaries and pastors and proclaimers of the word continue to be sent out. And then he goes on, let each one take care how he builds upon it. In other words, make sure you're building upon the word of God and not someone else's word. For no one... No one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. End quote. Jesus Christ is our cornerstone. His word is our foundation. Yes, let us rejoice and be glad in it. And may God richly bless the foundation that has been laid here as we continue to proclaim his word for Jesus' sake. And in his name, amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.